Uh, hello, welcome uh, to day, uh, Lent, Lenten day 34. Uh, we're down to six days, which is really one week, this Saturday. Uh, the next six will be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, and Saturday. Um, I'm really not planning on doing, uh, going as far as uh, the crucifixion uh, on in this uh, devotional series, because I feel like uh, uh, by the time I get to, to the crucifixion, we're really, that's, that's not, I mean, in my mind, that's not really Lent. That's not a preparing. That's, uh, that's what we were preparing for, was for uh, the crucifixion and then for Easter. Uh, so I'm going uh, to do some, some other things. Um, I'm going to take a number of days to talk about um, what we refer to as the Last Supper. Um, and uh, it may be, I may go into more detail uh, on some of this than you would really want to. Uh, and, and, and I'm not talking about uh, uh, what we talk about as Holy Communion. Uh, I'm talking about the actual Passover meal that Jesus uh, Jesus did. Uh, and so I don't want uh, you know don't don't uh, understand that there's a, there is a difference between what what they what they are. Uh, anyway, uh, that's kind of where we're going to go. Uh, our reading for yesterday was uh, from Matthew chapter 25. Uh, it's referred to as the parable of the sheep and the goats. Uh, and, and it is, I do, I say this, that it's um, uh, difficult, a difficult saying uh, because uh, we, we all know that, that salvation comes through faith in Christ. Uh, that is that is what gives us salvation. That is what makes us righteous with God. And in this parable, we're told of this separation of sheep and goats, and the the difference between them is how they have treated other people, especially, and not just any other people, but the less fortunate. And and um, very clearly, it says. Uh, uh, to um, those that are the sheep that are at, are at uh, uh, the son, the son's right hand, um, it, he, he refers to them uh, and says, um, uh, um, somewhere I know he refers to them as the righteous. Um, uh, right now, now, I'm, now I'm having trouble finding it uh, where he talks about them being righteous. Uh, oh, then the righteous answered him. And now, so maybe that's, it's not Jesus that calls them righteous, but it's, it's Matthew that calls them righteous. But, but the implication is that because they have done certain things, because of, you know, in a sense, because of their works, they are righteous. Uh, and, and, and then on the other hand, those that have not are not righteous. Uh, and, and that conflicts with our idea of uh, the fact that we don't, we don't believe in works righteousness. We believe in uh, salvation through faith alone and that that's the only, only issue. And so here we have a, a sort of a judgment scenario um, that separates people. Uh, and, and I think um, how, how we want to, how you interpret that, when that is going to happen, how it's going to happen, um, I would say it doesn't matter. Um, there are some that say that this will not apply at all to, to members of the faith, that, that when Jesus says, or when the, when this, when the, uh, uh, the writer of Matthew, although th these are this, these are Jesus's words, uh, Jesus says, "All nations will be get." Uh, he's talking about the Son of Man comes. All nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people. That that the term "all nations" refers to those people that are not people of the faith, and that. But if but e even then, that's circumspect because if they're not people of the faith, then then. So works doing good for others might get you in. If you're not a Christian, 
you know what I'm saying? That it, it doesn't, it, it, it conflicts. So uh, I, what I would simply say is, is, is uh, we need to understand that, that there is, there is this judgment uh, between sheep and goats and that uh, I would say that as a good Christian, uh, I want to live my life in such a way that, that I'm on that when, when this separation comes, I am on the right side. Uh, and by right side, I mean his actual right side, which were the sheep. Um, I think that there's a, an interesting thing here. Um, when, uh, when Jesus uh, or the Son of Man is, is uh, blessing the, the people on the right, um, they're blessed by his Father, inherit the kingdom, for I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and on and on and on. Um, and then when he gets to the end, the righteous say to him, Lord, when did, when did we do these things? Um, and, and I think that that, um, that speaks to us in a, in a certain way in that um, if, if, if you look at people and you're trying to decide, well, is that person, is that, is that Jesus or not? You know, is that, I don't, I don't think that person's Jesus, you know, I, I think that if I help them, they're going to, you know, they're, they're going to uh, misuse what I give them or, or, or whatever. Um, the righteous don't recognize when they, they've done the right thing or they've done it to the right person. Um, uh, and so we hear that when you have done it unto the least of these, all right, um, uh, uh, and the king answers, truly, I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family uh, or my brothers, one of the least of these, my brothers, you did it to me. Um, and, and, and I mean, I guess you could, you know, someone could make an argument that, uh, that the people that are the family or the brothers of Christ are Christians, but I don't think that's what it's saying. I think it's saying that we, uh, every time we interact with someone that is, is, one of the least of these, um, we need to be believe, We need to be functioning as if that person is Christ. Uh, these people, it, it doesn't seem to work that way here. They haven't. They they have they have functioned that way, but they have not thought of it that way. Uh, and I think that the call for us as Christians is to to recognize that uh, everyone we run into that is less fortunate, every person that needs food, every person that needs help. Uh, every person that, that needs clothing, every, you know, everyone that is in prison, uh, everyone that is ill, um, those are all, uh, those are all uh, brothers and sisters of Christ. Uh, and and when, when we do it to them, we are doing it to Christ. Uh, and so I think, and, and, when, and then on the reverse side, when we don't do, when we don't help, um, we are choosing to not do for Christ. Um, and so I think that, that um, you know, I mean, I think, I think that there's obviously times when we have to be careful, uh, you know, people take advantage and they always have. Uh, we want to be careful and we don't want to, we don't waste, we as the church can't waste resources even. Uh, you know, I, I have to be careful about what I do with my, uh, with my uh, minister's emergency fund money because uh, I can't, I can't give um, people huge amounts of money to help which they may need. Uh, because then I'm, I'm not able to help anybody else. Uh, and so we have to be careful, um, but, uh, but we do have to, I think we have to recognize that when there's a need, we're called uh, to help. And the flip side of that is this. Um, we are very prideful people. And, and I, I don't mean Christians, I mean Americans. We Americans are very prideful. Uh, for the most part, I mean, I, I, I think that, that there are a lot of people that have been so beaten down by uh, this world that they, they may not have a lot of pride anymore. But most of us, most of us um, are people that, that um, we have so much pride that we don't want to ask for help. Uh, we, would, we, would, we would never uh, acknowledge that we need help with food. Or that we need uh, uh, help with, um, you know, that, that our kids, uh, we don't have uh, the money to be able to help uh, buy new shoes because they really need, their old shoes are just falling apart and, and we don't have the money to do that. 
Um, I think for, for most people in our country, uh, we are prideful that way. Um, but folks, if, if in order for uh, some people to be sheep and some people to be goats, there have to be the least of these to have need. And, and I think we float in and out. Uh, you know, there may come a time in our lives when we really are people of need. Uh, and then there, there are, are other times of life when we are uh, the sheep that have, have what we need, have the resources, have the ability to help. Um, uh, but uh, if no one ever, if, 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 if we all put on a happy face and, and uh, ignore or, or um, don't, if we're not willing to reach out, and show people what it means to be um, uh, that we need help. Um, then, then people who who need the opportunity to be able to help don't have that opportunity. Um, so I, I would encourage. And, and when we are when we are vulnerable, when we do recognize we we have need, um, when we you know for example, I think that that there are a lot of people in our world where. Um, and I'm thinking a lot of Christians that um, when they're sick, they don't want anyone to know. Uh, they're very, very protective, and, and they don't want they don't any, they don't want anybody to say anything to the pastor. They don't want anybody told. Um, and if and if you don't know somebody's sick, how do you know to pray for them? Uh, if you don't know anybody's sick, how do you know not how do you how do you know or not how do you know that you need to visit? And, and maybe even help take care of them. How, how do you, if, if somebody doesn't do that? And so sometimes when we, we need to remember that we need to be vulnerable because when we become vulnerable, we become Christ to others. We give others the, the ability to minister to us. And, um, and when we give people the ability to minister to us, um, and when they, when they do minister us, they're ministering to Christ. And that makes us Christ-like. I mean, that makes us Christ representative. Uh, and so I challenge you to, to, do, to be on both, both sides of that. When you, need, when you need to be, be vulnerable and be one of the least of these. Uh, but when you don't, um, be one of the sheep uh, that, that does, what, uh, does what needs to be done. Uh, and, and yes, maybe being discerning, but does it uh, because you know that as we do it under the least of these, we do it under Jesus. Uh, that's what I get out of this. Um, before we read, let's uh, let's have a word of prayer. Dear God, um, I thank you for this parable of, of sheep and goats. And sh thank you for the reminder. Uh, you know, how this judgment of sheep and goats is going to happen, I have no idea. Uh, but I do know. Uh, that if I am vulnerable when I, when I, if I am open and honest when I am vulnerable and allow people to help me, uh, I, I become the least of these. And, and when people do things for me, they do them for you. And in that sense, I am Christ-like. I become Christ to others. Uh, and when we're not in, the, in need, when we are, uh, things are going well and we have the ability to help, uh, we are called to help others with prudence, of course, uh, but we're called to help others because when we do so, when we do it unto the least of these, our brothers and sisters, we do it unto you. And so uh, help us, O oh Lord, to, to always, uh, you know, keep that in the back of our minds and, 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 and not do the whole, well, is this person, is this person the least or not? Um, you know, that's, that's really not, um, that's not our job. Uh, we're called to help, and, 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 and I think we can help in ways that don't, uh, you know, that we don't allow, if, if someone is trying to take care of, uh, take advantage, we can, uh, we can still help without letting them take advantage, uh, but if we don't do anything, uh, then we are not doing it to the least of these, and we are not doing it to you, and so just help us focus on that, oh God. Uh, as we uh, begin our study today, uh, thank you for your Holy uh, Scripture. Thank you for the gospel of Jesus Christ uh, that you gave to us. Um, pray that, oh God, you might send your Holy Spirit now to dwell with us, um, that as we hear your words, uh, you will open our hearts and minds, uh, our eyes and our ears, that the spirit that dwells in us may hear what, what uh, help us to hear, uh, what you say to us in these texts, 
and, and then help us to get out of them what we need to get out of them uh, to recognize uh, what it is we need to be doing that we can be more like Jesus and that we can, how we can be transformed into the very image of Christ uh, for the world around us. For it's in Christ's holy name we pray. Amen. Like I said, I'm going to um, start uh, talking about the Passover meal, uh, and I'm not going to get very far today. Uh, in fact, I'm only going to get about three verses uh, because, uh, like I say, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do this in segments because there's a lot of different things that happen. Uh, I, I'm not, we're not going to talk about all of them because, especially if you go into the Gospel of John, there's just there's tons of stuff that goes on. Um, uh, but I want to start in, in Matthew uh, 26, uh, and I'm going to read verses 17 through 19. So I'm only three verses today. And this is what it says. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus asking, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, my time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. Now, uh, this is one of those where I'm going to, I mean, I, I do want you to, to read on uh, this text, read, you know, in another version and, and pray about it and think about it. But I want to challenge you to do something else. I want to challenge you to go beyond that. Um, I want to challenge you to find something you can read uh, about Jesus and the Passover. Um, you know, we, we now call this, uh, this Passover meal the Last Supper, um, uh, but it's, it really is a Passover meal. And I want you to, I want you to, to uh, uh, do a little bit of research. Uh, you got, you got uh, the rest of the day today on Saturday and, and you got tomorrow uh, before um, uh, you'd be seeing what I what I speak about on Monday, um, so I want you to to think about um, this text and and see what you can find out about Jesus and the Passover. What um, what is it the, that the Passover? What is it the Passover? I guess this is the thing. What is it the Passover meant to Jesus? Not not what does it? What did he talk about in it and say to his disciples and and then what did we get out of it as the church? What did it mean to him? as a Jew, because that's, Jesus is a Jew, and, G, and Jesus celebrates probably, I, 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 I can say without a doubt, Jesus celebrated the Passover every year of his life. Uh, what, is, what does that mean? What did the Passover mean to Jesus? Uh, so I, I challenge you to do that. A little different challenge today, uh, but I just pray that uh, you do that, uh, you gain insight, uh, and uh, uh, I'll, I'll be back here and see you uh, on Monday morning uh, or Monday at noon when I when I post. Um, have a blessed uh, rest of the weekend. Uh, remember tomorrow is uh, Palm Sunday. Uh, make sure and come. Uh, if you've got little ones, bring little ones so that they can wave the palms. Uh, and it's just going to be a glorious day in the life of the church. We have special music and other things, so uh, you don't want to miss it, and uh, we'll see you here.